Well, hello. I don't know if you guys... Well, I think... Ow! Sorry about that. Um, I'm sure you guys can see me, so hopefully you can see me. If not, everything I'm going to be holding will be right in this zone. What we're going to be talking about right now is the bones of the skeleton. Now, we didn't go into the depth that I wanted to this uh, semester, but um, we're doing what we can. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my little friend here. Okay, he's not the most perfectly... Um, not the most perfectly designed model, but I'm going to use him and I'm going to use real bones. Okay, so you doing all right today? Not so great, Dave. Okay, he's a little feeling a little uh, under the weather, I guess. Okay, so um, I'm going to start out. I'm just going to use the diagram that you guys uh, had as homework as the starting point. So we're just going to start out with the top. The skull is called the cranium. Okay, so we're going to call it the cranium. The cranium. Now, there are bones of the skull, and uh, that video should be up, so you're responsible for those as well. I gave you homework on that. So there's a number of those, but this one is the bones of the skeleton that I'm going to review with you. Okay, so there's all the bones of the skull, which we're not going to talk about in this video. The skull itself is called the cranium. The upper jawbone is called the maxilla. The lower jawbone is called the mandible. Okay, everything in the backbone every single one of those bones is called a vertebra or they are collectively called vertebrae now there are three sections of the spine there's the cervical section which is where the um, neck is the thoracic section where all the ribs are attached and then the lowest part which you've probably heard of before the lumbar you hear about lumbar support this is the lumbar region now each one of these vertebrae is numbered so we've got the for the cervical vertebrae we've got c1 c2 c3 through c3 and so on through the seven cervical vertebrae then you've got the thoracic which are t1 t2 t3 etc and then the lumbar which are l1 l2 so if you ever if somebody says l2 uh vertebrae vertebra it is the second lumbar vertebrae or vertebra okay um and then we've got the ribs of the rib cage. We'll just call those ribs. Um, you don't have to know specifics. Now, those three things, the cranium, the spine, and the rib cage make up the axial skeleton. Everything else is called the appendicular skeleton, the appendages. So a little bit more on the ribs, on the front of the rib cage, which I'll show you a real more life-size image. Imagine this is the cartilage that is right here before the actual real ribs start. Um, this is your sternum, okay? So the breastbone is called your sternum, okay? Then we're going to move this guy over. Gonna let him rest for a little while. Take it easy, easy, don't fall there. And we're gonna start going through the bones down through the body. I'm gonna start with the shoulder girdle, the pectoral girdle, which is made up of two major bones, one, is something called the scapula okay that's the shoulder blade and then you have a small s shaped bone called the clavicle this is the collarbone okay these two bones work together to make up the pelvic girdle where your shoulder where your humerus the upper arm bone attaches okay so scapula looks like a spatula um, clavicle collarbone okay now let's take a look at the arm, the upper arm. Okay, so the arm is made up of three major bones. We've got the upper bone called the humerus, and then you've got these two lower bones called the radius and the ulna, okay? Now the radius and the ulna work like this. The ulna, if you were holding your arm out, well, let me see, if I'm doing the anatomical pose, the ulna is underneath. So the thumb is facing up, the radius is on the thumb side. No matter how much you turn your arm, the ulna is always underneath. That's because the ulna, let me grab an ulna. An ulna, if you look closely, you see that it has this U-shaped groove here. That is what, here's a humerus, upper arm bone. That groove fits right here, and that's what makes this um, fixed it won't move the ulna doesn't move it stays fixed now the radius goes like this and this 
So when you are turning your arm, pronating it or supinating it, the radius is the bone that flips and moves. The ulna stays perfectly fixed. Now how can you tell the radius from the ulna? Okay, so we got the humerus, the radius, and the ulna. The ulna has this U-shaped groove, okay? Ulna is the ulna, okay? U for ulna. Radius, think in terms of a radius of a circle. Look for there's like a little, like a suction cup shaped um, end of this bone. And what that does is it sits on this uh, prom, uh, protuberance on the, on the humerus and it rotates. That's what it pivots on. Okay, so we've got the radius and the ulna. Okay, now let's keep going in terms of hands or in terms of the bones of the arm. When we get to the wrist bones, I'm, I, um, I've got the big skeleton. Oh, wait, let me grab a hand. Oh, here we go. This will work. Okay, so this right here, can you tell what bone this is by looking at it? See this on the end? Okay, so this is the radius. And what these markings are where you see this is these are muscular attachment points, um, which is something that we're not going to hold you to the details on. Okay, so the bones of the wrist are called the carpals, C-A-R-P-A-L-S, okay? Then uh, the bones of the hand are called the metacarpals, and then when you get to the fingers, the ones that are actually move when you move your hand like this, those are called the phalanges, okay? Carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. Now, while I'm on that, let's go down to the, the legs and the feet. Here's a foot, okay? The, the uh, ankle bones are called the tarsals, not the carpals, but the tarsals. And then the foot bones are called the metatarsals. And then these toes out here are called the phalanges, just like your fingers, okay? All right, so, We've got, we just took care of the upper arm, or the, excuse me, the whole arm. Now we gotta work our way down to uh, the pelvis. Now I told you that, you know, for, for now, just to know the pelvis. Well, you've got, a, um, you've got this part of the pelvis and this part of the pelvis that are on the right and left side. And then in the middle, you have this little thing, this thing called the, um, the sacrum. Now it fits, well let's see, let me make sure I got this right. Facing forward, okay. Facing forward, yeah, okay, there we go, here we go. That ought to fit right about, do I have it on the wrong side? Yeah, I do, it's, this is facing forward. Okay, now we're talking. There we go, okay. So if I were to glue these together, which that's what your body does as you grow. It fuses all these bones together. They started out as separate bones. But what ends up happening is you end up with a pelvis shape. Now the overall pelvis is made from a lot of different bones, but the only main ones I want you to know are these. Okay, this upper flat part of the pelvis is called the ilium. Ilium, I-L-I-U-M. Okay, and then down lower is the ischium. The ischium, okay. So same thing on this side, ilium and ischium. Then the middle part that holds the two together, and this forms the, the base of your spine, your last vertebra, vertebrae or vertebra goes here on top of this, and then you have a number of vertebrae here that were fused together. They fused together and form this one large bone we call the sacrum, which is this middle part of the pelvis, Sacrum, S-A-C-R-U-M, and then the tip of it that's sticking down, your tailbone, it's something called the coccyx. Now, that is spelled C-O-C-C-Y-X, coccyx. Okay, if you fall on that, those of you that have, you know how painful that can be. But this really serves no purpose for us. It, it's kind of a remnant of maybe some of our distance, distant ancestors that had a tail, uh, more of a tail that was useful. Tails are very useful to animals that use them for balance or holding on to things. For us, we rely on our vision and our uh, standing up for balance now, and we use our arms for balance. There's really no, no, no longer a need for this, yet it has re remained and persisted in human beings 
And as long as you fall on it, you're going to find out how uh, big a deal it is. It hurts. Okay. So what I just showed you was the pelvis, also known as the pelvic girdle. That is the part of the body that holds the leg bones on. Okay. So you got a pelvis right here. Come on, daddy. Okay. So you got the pelvic girdle right here. Um, and then the big bone that is your thigh bone is called your um, femur. Now let me pull a femur to show you. No, 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 don't fall. Oh, no, he's lost his head. Okay, I'm just going to set him to the side here. No disrespect. Okay, so the femur, easy to tell. See, it's got this big um, thing called the acetabulum that sticks out. Um, and so this is what fits this into the, the ball or the socket of your, of your um, pelvis. Okay, so this is the femur. It's the largest bone. Now, it is your thigh bone. It sits on top of your um, tibia. Your tibia is your shin bone, this big, big bone call, called your tibia. It's kind of got a triangular top on it. This is called your tibia. And then on the outside of the tibia, you have something called the fibula. Okay, the fibula is a thin bone that goes on the outside. Tibia and fibula. Okay, I think I'm leaving one out, and that is this. Can you name that? Right, it's the patella. The patella is the kneecap. And so I think I've gone through just about everything. Okay, so it's not that detailed. It, it could be a lot more detailed, but I kind of went easy, uh, COVID and all, but um, that hopefully will help you. Rewind and watch again if you need to, okay? Or pause it and back it up a little bit if you need to, okay? All right, so anyway, there you go. There you have it. Sorry, buddy, didn't mean to step on you. And have a great day.